Hi, um, my name is Mr. Warwick and I'm a consultant cardiac surgeon here at the Royal Stoke University Hospital. Regardless of what operation you have, be it bypass surgery or valve surgery, assuming everything goes well and there are no major issues, your general stay in hospital is anywhere between five and seven days and then you go home and then you just recover, continue recovery at home. And for all intents and purposes, each and every one of you just need to remember all you've had to have done it from a technical perspective is a, is a broken bone. So you have a broken best breast bone. And as with any broken bone, it takes a while to recover. So when you do go home, the most important thing is that you don't do any heavy lifting or driving. And it's just a question of recovering after your operation. For some individuals, you get given some sternal support, be it a vest or, or some, some other support. Use those to aid in, in, in protecting and supporting your sternum to recover. And then generally, you come back to see your consultant at the end of six weeks. Hopefully by then, everything is healing well, your, your, your bone is stable, and then you just carry on with your recovery and, and that's where you, you come and, and the rehab team get involved and guide you onto your recovery after your surgery. Certainly, you'll be prescribed with no doubt more, more medication than you had before you came in. Depending on what type of operation you've had, be it bypass surgery or valve surgery, you, you will undoubtedly be on more medication. And that is to allow you to get over the operation. Once you come back to see your surgeon, all of those medications again are, are reviewed and adjusted accordingly. Uh, some are taken away and some may be added on uh, by your GP. So, so until there is a, a balance. And then as time goes on, your GP and your cardiologist should continue to re review those medications and, and adjust those accordingly as well. First thing that, that happens is that you start to wake up from your operation. So when you do start to wake up from your operation, you still have the breathing tube in your airway. For most people, it's, most people are very tolerant of it, um, but you'll hear the nurses reassure you to say that the breathing tube is there, just relax and concentrate on your breathing, okay? And then once you are more awake and the, breathe, and the, and the brain commands, then the breathing tube gets removed. From, and then thereafter, for the rest of that day and night after your operation, all, all we do and the nurses do is just look after you. So they will, may put a tight mask on your face every now and again to keep your lungs open. Uh, you may feel or notice some drains coming out from the bottom of your chest and that's just to monitor any blood loss. You certainly have, you will in, invariably have a catheter, so you don't need to worry about passing any urine, and that's for us to, to monitor your urine output. And you may feel some tugging at the side of your neck. That's where we put some lines in to give you medication and fluid if need be. And then for the, for the rest of that day and night, that's all we do, we just keep an eye on you. Hopefully, if things have gone well, then the following day, we certainly try and get you sitting out of bed. If it's possible, we get the drains out. The physios come to see you, they start the process of showing you um, breathing techniques and get certainly try if they can get you up and about and, and sort of marching on the spot to get your lungs open. In most cases, you're generally on the intensive care unit for, for about one to two days. Then you go back to the surgical ward and then hopefully by then your lines come out, your catheter comes out. Your physios get more involved with you. They get you walking around, generally, you know, once or twice a day to get your mobility going. The quicker you start to mobilize, the quicker your recovery will be. And then for the rest of your stay, be it five to seven days, that is the general trend. Assuming there are no problems, then you go home. And then, and then you continue that rehabilitation that you had there at home which in essence is, is just walking around rest when you're tired because you, invariably you'll be tired and resting is an important part of your recovery process you know continue to walk small amounts and improve those distances on, on a daily and weekly basis until you come to see the uh, your, your surgeon as soon as you wake up from your operation, most people feel as if, oh, I feel very well. And, and, they, and, they, and, they, and any concerns that they had 
something, oh, why, why am I worried about it? But it is a false sense of security because that's just your anesthetic and everything else that is still floating around inside of you. So generally on your second and third day, everything catches up with you. And, and you do, for some people, you do feel rough. You feel worse than where you were when you woke up. It is very common for that to happen. Okay, uh, and it's just your body just adjusting to the trauma that it's gone through. It generally lasts for about a day or so, and then once that you've gotten through that period, because obviously you get regular pain relief to help with the discomfort, then it all dissipates. And then, then, then you start to get better to the point that you're ready to go home. And, and, and then your recovery continues from there, really. So you wake up well, as I said, but it does get worse before it does get better again. I guess the biggest problem is, I mean, to, to be worried about is, is, is are you getting pain still, okay, from, from the sternal recovery point of view. Discomfort will be there, but if you're getting a lot of pain, it may imply that this is not healing well, especially when you come to see your surgeon after six weeks. Now, depending how much discomfort you have will, will determine what your surgeon decides to do next whether or not to get some further imaging to see whether or not this is healed properly. Other things to be concerned about is, is that you're, you may feel as if you're, you become more breathless after your operation. It's not uncommon to feel breathless afterwards simply because it's just the trauma that you've gone through. But in some instances, fluid uh, does reaccumulate, whether or not it, it accumulates into your lung spaces or accumulates around your heart again. And, and, it, and if it isn't improving, then that's where you seek medical advice, either contacting your surgeon that did your operation or seeking advice from your GP, who will then guide you as to whether or not you need to come into hospital for further tests or images. Certainly to begin with, because as I said, you have a broken bone and, and with any broken bone it takes a while to, to, to heal. So when we close your chest we use wires which bring the two edges of your bone together. So hopefully the wires keep those two edges in place but they do move and they will move and that clicking noise is just those bones moving. Okay, As time goes on your sternum becomes stable and that clicking noise does go away. But in some instances, the clicking is persistent and you do get discomfort afterwards, which means that the bones haven't healed or haven't aligned properly. And it really is a question of if that is the case, what we do about it. One can accept it because for some people it's fine, they can cope with it, but for other individuals, you know, it is a discomfort and pain is still there. And the only way to rectify that, if it truly is, hasn't healed properly, then to consider, you know, another operation to hopefully get it back together again. So certainly what after your operation, the physios will show you what to do. Um, certainly when you sneeze or cough, obviously it's going to be very uncomfortable. So the nurses and the physios we show you certain maneuvers to try and, and support your sternum. And the most common one is either to place a towel or put your arms across your chest to give your breastbone, your sternum some support. When you do go home afterwards, you still carry on with, with that same process. So protect your sternum if you think you're going to cough or sneeze by putting your arms across there. You will certainly be given some supports, be it a, a special vest, a sternal vest, or, or a big band that, that supports your sternum. In regarding to activities, in essence, all you need to remember is the fact you have a broken bone. So no heavy lifting or driving for at least for the first six weeks. It's just up and about mobilizing. And then when you come back to clinic to see your surgeon, he will assess your sternum. If it feels stable and, and it's healing well, then you can start to go back to driving gradually and with other activities as well. And then there afterwards you start your rehabilitation and then during that process assuming everything continues to make progress you know you're back to some normality within 10 to 12 weeks you are but but once again uh, for, for the first six weeks you are very limited because for all intensive purposes you have a broken bone so the only exercise 
that we strongly recommend and suggest is, is walking. Everything else you, you are limited to. Once you've come back to see your surgeon, assuming this is all stable, you can start to do a little bit more. Uh, you then obviously get seen by the rehab team or who will guide you into certain exercises that you can do as well. For the first six weeks, all it is is walking. That's all you can do. Yes, I, I sincerely hope the whole point of this operation, any heart operation, is to get you back to a better quality of life than where you were before. Um, and assuming everything goes well, the healing processes go well, and there are no complications, then you should be back, if not better, than where you were before your operation. Thank you.